What's going on YouTube? It is Pete coming in hot with another video, also known as that guy Pete you just refuse to invite to gatherings. Just spilled coffee on myself. <laughs> Hope you're all doing good. Um, had the day off today for Yom Kippur, so that was pretty cool. But uh, basically, if 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 you're not Jewish, you, it's just a day off, which works just fine for me. Um, but the reason we're here today is to talk about social media use, uh, specifically social media addiction. It's association with depression in particular, but obviously, usually hand in hand with depression is anxiety, peanut butter and jelly, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to go over uh, just a very simple infographic from 2018, a bit dated. So if anything, what I say here, expect it to be more pronounced in, you know, 2022, if anything. But, you know, it's a good foundation. And then to sort of um, supplement that, we're going to read an article, um, Who's More at Risk from Social Media, Girls or Boys? And um, we're going to look at... Um, a survey that talked to 14 year old boys and girls because I think like high school is really the genesis where we really start seeing people get clicky. They start f trying to find out who they are, uh, find their tribes, so to speak, social approval, social disapproval, that type of shit um, starts to become very prevalent in the lives of these people. The idea of social status starts to carry some weight versus when you're a kid, you, you kind of don't give a shit. At least that was my experience as a kid, certainly. So we're going to begin with the infographic, and then we're going to go into the article. I'm going to give commentary as we go, as always. And then I guess um, I'll conclude with um, just some final thoughts and some things that I'm thinking uh, based on what we discuss here. Okay? So... The first thing I'm looking at here is an infographic called uh, Gender, Social Media Use, and Depression. All right. So it looks like a Beatrice Fields from the Department of Sociology at Bowling Green State University uh, put this together. And at the core, right, the question that she is asking is, does social media use impact a user's well-being? We can all guess the answer to that, I suspect based on how much we talk about, you know, psychology-related topics on this channel. And uh, are the effects of social media on depression more prevalent for females or males? That is the principle of comparison and comparing yourself to other people and all this. Who's it going to impact more? Because social media basically is just comparison. That's all it is. You're looking at other people's lifestyles, getting bombarded with these people who allegedly have it better than you and so on and so forth. Obviously, the reality is far more nuanced than that. But it doesn't stop people from uh, reacting the way they do and feeling the way they do. Now, the reason why we're doing this is tied to the fact that most Americans use social media sites. Back in 2018, 68% of Americans used Facebook, 35% used Instagram, 24% used Twitter. So, yeah, we, we talk about how Twitter is just filled with like cesspool garbage all the time. Yeah, you can see that um, a very specific uh, section of the population, if you will, operates there. But these numbers, no doubt, have gone up since then. If anything, these um, social media platforms are experiencing more usage. Um, for sure. Instagram, definitely. Now, little is known as to how interactions through social media can influence a person's depressive symptoms. Yep, very much like how back in the days, you know, we didn't really know what cigarettes did, right? Everybody smoked like way, way, way back. We're talking like my grandpa's generation. Everybody smoked, right? Nobody knew, but now we know. Pornography, this is a more recent one. Nobody really knew psychologically like what it can do to you. Nobody knew that for some guys it could sexually impair you. So if you have a girlfriend, for example, you probably shouldn't be watching this stuff. If you're single, whatever. It doesn't matter. Do what you want. <clears throat> but um, social media, compared to those two things, is even newer. 
So again, usually as a reactive um, society, as a reactive species in general, we tend to kind of react after the fact. And hindsight's always twenty twenty. Uh, proactive is not really in the wheelhouse as much as it should be. We are looking at something like social media. Some of us are seeing the writing on the wall and can see that social media is definitely very similar in scope in terms of its potential to be addictive, uh, very much like uh, pornography can be. And, you know, some could argue um, video games as well. But notice these are all potential escapes from whatever it is you're dealing with um, in life. So depending on the severity of your life, that could play a role in how addictive the addiction gets. How badly do you need to run away, you know? But um, obviously as this social experiment, if you will, social media where we're just, we're seeing all these posts, we're seeing all these videos, we're seeing all these TikToks and this, that, and the third. We're seeing all the receipts online. We're getting the biggest global sample <laughs> we could possibly get. And we're definitely learning a lot about ourselves um, as humans. But uh, the background of this study that they did was that popular social media use can correlate with symptoms such as addiction, cravings, and mood dysregulation. Think of the little kids sitting in front of the TV watching cartoons. Parent shuts off the TV and says, hey, it's time to have supper, and the kid loses his shit, something like this. Um, on popular sites, men initiate and value conflict in discourse while women avoid it. Again, um, given that um, in the whole intersex relations thing, it tends to be men who are competitive, not women. This is not surprising that um, men are more likely to uh, bring the conversation to a confrontational point while women are more likely to be agreeable and avoid confrontation. That's not surprising at all. And uh, the role women occupy online is more restrictive um, than men, according to Herring 2008. Now, the hypothesis here that uh, Beatrice thinks is going to show up in the results is that we're going to see a significant link between the use of popular media uh, and depression, that there's a link between social media use and depression. And the hypothesis also states that the association will be more pronounced in women, which I would also hypothesize. Absolutely. I think women are far more concerned with social approval or lack thereof uh, than men are. There are exceptions, of course. Um, you know, narcissists, Specifically, like narcissistic men are probably very concerned with, um, you know, social social approval and disapproval. They don't handle criticism well, shit like this. But on a balance of probabilities, you think the average man, average woman, the average woman probably gives a shit more about the approval of her peers than the man does. So there's that. Now, um, in terms of data, uh, we have the General Social Survey 2016 American adults aged 18 to 89, and um, both depression and social media use were asked in subsamples, N equals 682, okay? So uh, that's a pretty decent sample size, probably double what we need to have a 5% uh, confidence interval, so that's good. Um, but if we're looking at the um, dependent measure versus the independent measure, so obviously the dependent measure relies on the independent measure to be determined. So depression would be the dependent measure and social media use would be the independent measure. Depending on the use of social media or lack thereof, depression should be affected. That's kind of what we're saying here. And basically to measure this uh, dependent variable, they asked the simple question, have you experienced depression in the last week? Yes, which could mean sometimes, most of the time, all the time. <coughs> Excuse me. Choking on air. And the other option is no, obviously, which means not at all. So it sounds like they used a, um, I forgot what they call it, is it a Likert scale? Is that like where they give you like five options or something? Um, sounds like they did that. And basically, if they said anything other than no, they counted it as yeah, but if they said no, they counted it as no, of course. 
And the results were that 31.8% said yes to being depressed in the last week, while 68.2% said no. So most people don't feel particularly depressed, based on this sample anyway. But if there's a confidence interval of 5%, one way or the other, in this, what that means is that the yes could be as high as, you know, 36.8. It could be as low as, what, 26.8, while no could be as high as um, 73.2 and as low as 63.2. So it's like, okay, that makes sense. Fair enough. And given the sample size, we could say that this is a representative sample, assuming that it was randomized. It wasn't like cherry-picked sample. Okay, that's cool. Now, when we're looking at use of popular social media, percent used any popular social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and or Pinterest. Uh, nowadays, I mean, if you, add, if you were to add on things like TikTok and all these other things that weren't really around like that, Back in 2018, this number may be higher, but 81.2% back in 2018 said that they used so, some type of social media, while 8.8% um, said they did not use. Okay, so yeah, we, and it looks like uh, we have a sample where, you know, 54.8% of the sample was women and 45.2% was men. And when we ran the numbers at the end of the day, the percent of U.S. adults who reported feeling depressed by social media use total, the people who said they were depressed in the prior week that did not use social media, 25.6% of that group was depressed. While those who used social media, 32%. So they basically said that this was not considered significant, right? It's a pretty small gap, wasn't considered significant, which means that using social media, not using social media, if you're depressed, you're depressed. But that's not considering gender. So it seems um, that in the abstract, hypothesis one is wrong that there is not really a significant link in general between the use of social media and depression. Um, however, percent of U.S. adults who reported feeling depressed by social media use by gender, if we look at men, out of the men who did not use social media, 25.3% felt depressed last week, so that's one in four, while 28.1% of men who did use social media felt depressed last week. So basically, not really a significant gap between those two. However, for women, for women who did not use social media, 26.1% felt depressed. No real difference between their male counterparts. Definitely not a significant one when not using social media. However, when women did use social media, 37.1% were depressed in the prior week. Which seems to indicate that there is something significant here when women specifically use social media. Which again, would say that hypothesis 2, the association will be more pronounced in women, actually is confirmed here. Now, of course... The more we replicate this, the more reliable it will become. My hypothesis that I would tack on on top of this is that if we were to extend this from not just social media use, but dating app usage, this effect that you see here will be even more pronounced. That's what I would hypothesize. Again, because it takes, it strips it of all its emotion. At least on social media, I mean, the worst thing that can happen to you is you don't get a like, right? Which men, that's like a Tuesday. You don't get a like, it's like, whatever. Women, though, you put up a photo, you don't get enough likes, you might take that photo down. I've heard women say some shit like that. So again, women are very, very concerned with that approval, disapproval. If they put something out and it doesn't get sufficient attention and validation, no good. So of course, obviously, women or men who are operating like that, psychological profile, very specific type of person that's probably concerned with this type of shit. 
definitely those that are probably a little more histrionic and narcissistic in nature. Attention, which means basically highly attention seeking or really fold themselves. Those types of people definitely would care about that shit a lot more than those who don't. But it seems in general, the average woman cares more about it than the average man. And the reason why an average woman gets more attention on social media than an average man is, again, because of that libido gap, that desire gap. The general principle that men desire women more than women desire men. Simple as that. On top of that, take the in-group bias that women have, the sisterhood, they're generally very supportive of each other, and it just sort of stacks up. And then you just kind of see a bunch of comments from girls saying, you go, girl, and then a bunch of guys with comments saying, oh, you know, you're so beautiful, you're so this, you're so that, blah, 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 blah. You look at the man's comment section, nothing. It's like, well, why is that? Well, this desire gap is a big part of it. And the internet makes it clear to see. So if you spend all your time on social media exposed to this 24-7, 365, you start to get a little disheartened when you see, again, like the girl on the Twitch stream, the guy on the Twitch stream, they're playing the same video game. The girl, meanwhile, has five times as many people watching her. Why? Cleavage. Why? Why? Evolutionary reasons for that. Desire gap, libido gap. It is what it is. Women get more clicks. Right? And... The summary of the findings here is that the link between use of popular social media and depression is significant in women, but not for men. Women who do not use the four popular social media sites are less depressed than women who do use them. Though I would say that, again, the reason why this might be is that the thing that the link for men might be a different thing altogether. I always say way back in the potato collection, I said, I had a video, um, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, um, or it was like porn is from Mars and social media is from Venus. Like what interests men and what interests women is like two very different things, right? Men are interested in sex. And porn is like the ultimate like ease of accessibility to vicariously experience that, right? While women can get free validation and attention online via social media without fear of rejection. But the reason why I'm saying that t dating apps in my hypothesis the this depression would be more pronounced is that there you do have to worry about rejection quite a bit and of course men face rejection more than women do because the desire gap once again but um yeah when you when you see the the numbers here it's obvious that women are very very concerned with social approval and disapproval and their image and so on and so forth and i always say that the reason why that is is because in the ancestral environment in which our psychology evolved, social disapproval meant you got exiled from the tribe. Now, men had the hunter-gatherer type skill set to at least like fight their way out of situations. Women didn't evolve to do that. Women were not built for that. So if a woman got exiled from the tribe, she was pretty much bear lunch. And again, the, the ancestral brain that we have can't understand the nuance that Somebody not liking your post doesn't mean you're going to be exiled from the tribe and get eaten by a bear. Okay, like it just it can't understand that on the subconscious level. We can consciously appreciate it and understand that that's not what's going to happen to us. But again, you could take people out of the yoga booga. You can't take the yoga booga out of people. It is what it is. So again, after they give the summary of the findings. Um, what they do after that is they give some further research recommendations. It ought to aim at the links between popular media sites and less popular sites to get a better grasp at additional factors that may contribute to depression or other serious real life behaviors, right? So you have to kind of, this is kind of an oversimplified thing, right? Like maybe there's other factors here. Maybe some, for example, in this gap, some of these men are porn users, Probably most of them are porn users, right? Maybe that could account for the gap between the 25.3 and 28.1. Maybe there's something else. Maybe these women between the 37.1 and 26.1 are chronic shoppers and they have a shopping addiction. There's things that it doesn't really account for here that, again, could offer explanatory power that makes this look less pronounced and then maybe that whole significance would disappear. Um... Though, based on what I see, I see lots and lots of people posting videos about how they have no friends. 
I see people posting videos about how they can't find a romantic partner or anything like this. And um, I say it all the time. We've never been more integrated as a species yet disconnected as humans. So again, <clears throat> the only way you're going to get reliable results here is that if you replicate this again and again and again. Which I'm sure, you know, if, if we went through the trouble of digging through the literature, we probably could find some replication on this. Too much of anything is usually going to have a negative impact on you. Uh, we're, we, weren't, we weren't built to uh, gorge ourselves on things. But because we don't live in an ancestral environment anymore where resources are scarce, now we can kind of overload our dopamine reward system in ways that the ancestral environment could not have foreseen. So in that regard, we're kind of our own worst enemy, right? But, um, yeah, we're looking at um, how these factors could contribute to depression and other real-life factors. We're also looking at online social behaviors and how we research them, like how people behave online. How does the compact online space impact our expectations of the real world, right? Basically, do we kind of look at online and based on our experiences online, we tend to project that out to the real world. And that just makes the real world an unenjoyable place because people take their, let's call it online baggage, internet baggage off the internet and then bring that out into the real world. So, you know, is it, is it that people have gotten shittier? Is it that the internet has brought out the shittiness in us and it was always there? Is it both? Is it a blend? It's probably a little bit of everything, but, um, yeah, it seems that many are not able to discern between online and IRL out there. And lastly, they want they are thinking that research should focus on the analysis on how social bonding online impacts behavior. Um, yeah, I think also it's a lot easier to have a um, online friendship type deal because again, it's less maintenance, and a lot of people look at that too. You know, people want their Uber Eats, they want their Airbnb, they want their Amazon Prime, they want their Netflix, they want their Apple Music, they want their friends online, so it's minimal investment, and they want their Tinder dates where they can put in minimal work, um, and they want their social media, which is like their illusory social status, so on and so forth. They want everything easy peasy, carnation instant, it's at my door and I don't have to do shit. Um... And of course, that when you have that type of a system, nothing feels rewarding. Everything sort of feels empty. And uh, people can't figure out why they're depressed. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, from where I sit, it's, it's kind of obvious why. But I think the reason why it's, it's, this depression is more pronounced in women is because, again, women are very, very concerned with social approval and disapproval. And I think social media, because you can look and see other women and how much approval or lack thereof they're getting, again, you're comparing yourself to that. And then you think, oh, that's the benchmark of what sufficient approval and attention is. In the old days, there was no social media. You know, you just went out into the world, you got approached, and it was like, wow, someone approached me. Now, that was pretty awesome. But nowadays, it's like, no. Now you got to go online. It's all about how many likes you get. That, that's what it is. And it's like, is that, is, is that what you think life is? You know, we talked about this the, um, the other day. Um, this idea that, um, that women look at their Instagram following like that's their social status, right? Why do you think all these Instagram models, right? They think like, hey, they're entitled to an NBA player or a rapper or something like this, Right? Because they think that their Instagram following makes them on par with them. It doesn't, but they think that. So, of course, when you have social media that inflates your sense of self-worth, it inflates your expectations, and then the real world doesn't seem to match when you go out and touch grass. Yeah. Turns out your, uh, your internet cred, your internet street cred, it's non-transferable <laughs> to the real world. And... Um, of course, that kind of creates a, a a psychological bottleneck that results in this anxiety and depression. But I wanted to go over this second article. It's from Family Zone. I'll, I guess I'll link this in the description as well. Who's more at risk from social media? 
girls or boys. And again, this is just sort of building off what we already outlined in the previous um, study that I just talked about. And obviously it's going to be girls. But every other day, it seems, there's a scary headline linking social media with mental health risks. So you probably won't be shocked to hear that yet another major study has found a strong link between heavy social media use and depression, this time among 14-year-olds. Yeah, and probably on social media, there's a lot of bullying, too. Yeah, the high school bullying doesn't just happen in the high school anymore. Now it follows you home onto the internet. So that probably doesn't fucking help. But anyway, let's continue. What may surprise you, or not, if you happen to be the parent of a teenage girl, is that among that heaviest users group, girls outnumber boys two to one. And this seems to set a trend, right? Yeah, sure, maybe as men get older, more and more of them use social media probably to try to maintain friendships, keep friends, and things like this. Um, or if they're just bored taking a shit or something. But you can see kind of from the onset, women are more interested in social media than men are. They're interested in that socialization aspect of it. But when you get into it and you actually see what it's all about, you just have a bunch of people showing the best parts of their life. You have you know nothing of the true hardships of their life because nobody has the vulnerability to just talk about that type of shit on the internet. Um, you know, to that degree. And we've kind of gotten to a point where, you know, people actually talk about their bad experiences on the internet. People are like, oh my God, you're so brave and blah, 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 blah. And me, I just look at it like, well, it's it's healthy to air that stuff out. It's healthy to talk to people. But so many people, they just feel they have nobody to talk to. So they just air it out on the internet instead. And I, I think, honestly, looking back at my videos, I'm no exception to this rule. Um, but the more a person of either gender uses social media, the greater the likelihood of depression but here's the thing, even when boys and girls spent exactly the same amount of time on social media, the depression risk for girls was significantly higher. Which again, because women are more concerned with social approval, social disapproval, and things like this. But I would say if there is a time where boys are concerned with social approval and disapproval, the peak is probably like in high school. That's probably where it is. Because again, that's when we're all trying to figure out like who the fuck we are, right? But using data from over 10,000 14-year-olds who took part in the UK Millennium Cohort study, researchers found 40% of girls admitted being on their social media accounts for more than three hours a day, compared to only 20% of boys. Only four out of every 100 girls, compared to 10% of boys, reported abstaining entirely. So 4% versus 10%. Across the board, more hours spent scrolling translated into greater risk of depression, but there was an unexpected skew in that risk once use hours were held constant. Among teens who were on social media more than five hours a day, girls' depression scores rose to 50%, while boys only increased to 35%. Why? No definitive answer has yet emerged, but clearly boys and girls are interacting differently on social media and consuming its contents in different ways. Some experts have suggested that girls make more comparisons between themselves and the images they view in a way that boys don't. Mm -hmm. There it is. You answered your own question. And that mirror, mirror on the wall habit is notoriously bad for mental health. Common factors for boys and girls who are heavy scrollers include lack of sleep and cyberbullying. Yes. So, um, there's a lot, again, in high school, there's a lot of cyberbullying, so that probably contributes for the depression. Now, granted, um, the depression would probably be for a different reason as you get older. Like if you're a girl in your 20s and you are, for example, on social media and you're watching all your girlfriends around you get married versus if you were never on social media, you wouldn't have be bombarded with all these girls, quote unquote, being happy. Again, you don't see the, the hard rough patches in their marriages. You don't see the hard rough patches in their relationships. You just see the best of their relationships, just the honeymoon parts right? And then you're sitting here drinking your glass of wine, petting your cat. <laughs> and you think like, oh shit, all my girlfriends are moving on. They have it so much better than me. Right? But what if you were not on social media like that? I think way, way back in the potato collection, I referenced a Danish study. I have to find it. Um, I think I heard it referenced on a TED talk somewhere. But basically when people got the fuck off social media, they reported higher contentment.
because you're not spending your time comparing to others. Comparison is a thief of joy. I always say that. It really, really is. But, you know, even in the older situation, same feeling of sadness and emptiness, different reason. In high school, it's probably because you're getting bullied. But as you get older, maybe it's because you're watching all your friends get married. You're watching all your friends move on and become successful. And you're just kind of sitting here and it feels like your life is the same. Right? They, you feel like they're out there doing big things and shit like that. But you don't get to see the fact that they struggle too. Everybody has their shit. Everybody's fighting their own battles. But not everybody just broadcasts that all over the internet. So, of course, if your life is kind of shit and you're going through a rough patch and then you go on social media and all you see is this person's living a good life, that person's living a good life, good, 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 good. Yeah, it's going to fuck you up. That's going to fuck you up. It absolutely is. But I definitely think, given that, again... Women are more concerned with social approval and disapproval and things like this. And social media, by definition, is building a network and where approval is currency. Clout, by definition, is approval, right? You have followers, it's because they, they approve of you. you. People like your shit, they approve of you. Men, on the other hand, it's, uh, it's social media is like anything else. We have to put the work in. You know, we, we, we don't have boobs and ass to just show <laughs> and get that. And ladies, I'm not saying that you shouldn't use your sexuality to make money or not use your sexuality to make money. You want to do that. That's your business. And you can deal with the consequences attached to that. That's yours. But just understand that because men don't have that tool in the wheelhouse because of the libido gap and desire gap, you just don't want us as much as we want you. Social media, we, we have to work at it like anything else. We want to build a social network. We want to build a following. You know, we actually have to show up with something like talent <laughs> you know what i mean you know maybe like a stand-up comedian stand a lot of stand-up comedians i watch they have huge followings but they worked very hard for those followings musicians worked very hard for those followings artists work very hard for those followings you know what i mean then you got some instagram model i keep saying that because she's not she's not a real model i don't care what you say they can have like a million subs because they have an hourglass figure Nice, smooth, silky hair, blue eyes, this, that, and the third. Looking like a dime piece, right? And they didn't have to put any work in other than just looking that way. You know what I mean? It's just, it's totally different. But you can see how if you're a girl, and let's say you don't look like that, this is another thing. This could lead to things like body dysmorphia and so on. You're looking at that. That's fucking you up even more. Again, men, we're, we're just not like that. Like, I can look at a dude on social media. Let's say he's, like, ripped. He's got six-pack abs, shit like that. I'm not looking at that like, oh, my God, I feel like shit now. It's like, no, that motivates me. I'm going to go to the gym, you know? Like, I want to look like that. Let me research how to fit, like, what work do I have to put in? Because, man, we've always kind of had to put the work in. Because if you don't put the work in, um, you will be held accountable. Like, it just it is what it is. So women are just kind of sitting there with their depression. Um, and again, like I said, I think dating apps make it even worse. Like if the social media seeing all your friends getting happily married and shit like that, that doesn't fuck you up enough. Compound on top of that, a bunch of cads ghosting you and treating you like garbage uh, probably doesn't help either. But I would say probably what, um, what leads to depression for men is just a feeling of loneliness and things like that. And in that regard, if a man feels lonely... It doesn't really matter if he's online or offline. In the romantic sense, he's going to feel alone no matter what. But at least like we have that camaraderie like in forums and spaces like this where we can kind of talk about it. But I think we're we're a bit more real realistic about it. We're more of realists. You know, it's not we're, it's not about how we feel. It's just sort of like, okay, this is what it is. And we're going to make the best of it. So yeah. I would say that's probably why women are affected more by uh, social media use and social media addiction. And it can affect their ability to form meaningful relationships. Because here's the thing, if you're on social media all the time, you think like the minute you close your laptop or put your phone down, like the effects of that on you just stop? No, that spills over into your relationship. Well, I saw fucking Sarah and, and her husband and the the things they do together, that's so awesome. Why can't we do that? And blah, 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 when you can't just fucking enjoy it for what it is. You're with a guy that you like and so on and so forth. Like you can't even do that because again, comparison. And it's not healthy. It's not healthy to compete with the rest of the world like that. 
you know, and you can't figure out why you're depressed. You can't figure out why you're checking into the shrink and requesting an antidepressant. Listen, if you need those training wheels to kind of get you through it, okay, fine. You know, I'm not going to, not going to use that against you. I myself use it. Um, but I've talked about, you know, next time I talk to the shrink, I'm probably going to try to get the training wheels kicked off and try to ride the bike myself again. But, um, yeah, it's abundantly clear to me why social media use has a much more significant impact on women. Because again, the way men get treated online and the way men get treated in the real world, it's not really that different. While for women, it's, uh, it's vastly different. <laughs> Like women could just post photos online, get tons of likes and things like this, and then they go out into the real world and they realize most people kind of don't give a fuck. Like, yeah, they'll acknowledge you're hot and shit, but they don't really give a fuck like they do online where it's easy just to leave a compliment or something like this, which is why most of that simping shit, it happens online in the Twitch streams and stuff like this. So, yeah, I mean, in response to this... For the ladies in particular, I I think honestly everybody should try detoxing from social media every now and again. But I think honestly, like women abstaining from social media use is like the female equivalent of nofap. Like it's like, well, let's call it no post. You post nothing anywhere. You don't go on social media. You have an app in your phone that blocks all the social media sites and whatever so that you can't use them. Like I would challenge you to try, try going 30 days without social media. Try it. And just see if it, if it improves your life. Try for 30 days. Talk about how you felt at the beginning. And kind of, I guess, write in your journal what emotions you're feeling and shit like that. Don't watch. Don't, not don't watch. <laughs> um, don't use social media for like 30 days. Come back. Write back in the book again. And do it that way. And fellas, I, you're in, I think um, you, if you want to try the same thing, you think you have a social media addiction issue, give it, give it a shot. You know? I mean, I kicked Facebook a while back, and I can tell you kicking Facebook was probably one of the better decisions I've made, for sure. Like, just so much negative energy on Facebook. Have Not having that negative presence in my life every single day, um, that was a huge plus, for sure. Yeah, so, I mean, you can see that nowadays, especially, like, with technology, like, younger and younger and younger, these kids are using this tech and they're being shaped and molded by it. It's like who they are, right? And um, you have kids growing up not knowing a world without the internet. So, of course, that's going to have a huge impact on um, the psychological development, right? The environment affecting the expression of who they are, so to speak, in the epigenetic equation. Okay? But, yeah, just to recap everything, we said that basically... Social media use and linked to depression, less so anxiety, but it's there too. Um, in general, not really a significant difference between people who did and didn't. When asked, hey, were you depressed last week? With men, there wasn't really a difference, but with women, there was a significant difference. Women who used social media were more likely to say they were depressed than those who didn't. Um, and, you know, the study admitted that basically, hey, Maybe there's other variables we didn't account for that could shrink that window a little bit, perhaps. Uh, but based on the other article that we read, it seems like women are more affected by it because, again, they're spending their time comparing themselves to other people, whether it be um, what they think a good-looking woman is, which I guess a good measure of what a good-looking woman is is which woman gets the most likes, which one gets the most comments, and stuff like that. So they're looking at those women and they're like, shit, I want to be like that. And they're comparing themselves to that every day instead of comparing who they are today to who they were yesterday, trying to get better on their own, not worrying about anyone else. That's kind of how a man would deal with it. But I get it. Women are different. Um, so there was that. There's also the thing like cyberbullying. That's probably a big reason why people are very depressed on social media because it's not like the old days where, hey, the last bell rings, you get home. You don't have to deal with bullying again until you go back the next day. But now it kind of follows you home on social media. Um, and then as you get older, it's kind of more like your friends are moving on. They're becoming successful. They're getting married. And then you're just kind of sitting here alone. And if you're a dating app user, compound on top of that, the ghosting and shit like that, you probably feel even worse, right? So maybe one of the best things you could do for you and your psychological health, if you really want to like, you know, take it a step back, really address the core issues here, whatever's going on up here, trauma, whatever it may be, 
maybe the best thing to do is to just try to detox. Take 30 days off from social media. Keep a journal. See, see how your mental health improves. It probably will. Because you'll find that the only person, the only frame of reference you have is who you were yesterday compared to who you are today. You're spending so much time looking at other people and their alleged green grass, because remember, they're only showing you pieces of the grass. They're not showing you the rough patches instead of looking at your grass and watering your own. Food for thought, just something to think about. And I'm talking to somebody who, you know, I've gone on like two 30-day streaks of no porn so far, right? That's, that's you know, something that has made, you know, again, low, diminishing returns, but initially, like, it made a difference. And it was something that, that helped me. So, yeah, I'm not saying never use social media again, right? I'm not saying that. But maybe some time away wouldn't kill you. Guy or girl. Like, if you find that it's kind of having a negative impact on your mood and your outlook, it probably wouldn't kill you. Just to take a step back and just be like, all right, all the time that I spend scrolling and going through all this shit three to five hours a day, maybe I can go and do something else with my time that's more productive. And see what you can get done. Keep a catalog, keep, um, keep a journal of what you do and what you accomplish and so on. And then maybe you could see how much you got done. And um, yeah, that's all I really got. I, I think that's, that's the recap. So yeah, I, chal- I challenge you to do a no post. The, the female analog to no, fa- no post. Um, yeah, so feel free to leave a like. Feel free to leave a dislike, call me an asshole, whatever you do, don't report the video. It's good information, probably going to help somebody, um, even if it doesn't necessarily help you. Um, sorry if it doesn't. Maybe it'll help you at a future date and you're just not ready for it today. Um, if you're enjoying the content, though, hit that sub. If not, unsub. It's all good. I don't take it personally. But at the end of the day, this is the type of stuff we're looking to target, right? We want to help you process things like depression, anxiety, anger. Because if those feelings fester and control you, those are the types of things that lead to self-deletion. This is too unbearable. I have to end it. And, you know, where I come from, that's ideally the last place you want to go. Ideally, you want to do anything but that, if possible. See it through. See what happens. You can't save everyone, though. It is what it is. But I try. Giving you the comprehensive info. That's what it's all about so that you can just kind of uh, go through all the videos, take in what you want, leave the rest, talk with people in the comments, see what, see if you have any common ground with some people here. Most people that are in my comment section, good people, cool to talk with. Um, and ladies, if you're watching, hopefully you found some useful insight in this one. This one was definitely geared a little bit more towards y'all. But fellas, there's definitely value here for you as well if you have a social media addiction or any addiction in general the principle of addiction is kind of the same it's just the nature of the beast is a little different but the dopamine reward center and escaping from whatever it is that troubles you that's kind of the common theme right as always i am that guy pete you refuse to invite the gatherings i'll catch you for the next one but for now i'm gonna head on out take care